Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, it's a Luminar 4 full raw edit. I'm really excited about this one, so without any further ado, let's get started. This is the final result, but let me show you where we're going to start from. And it's going to look like this. This is basically right out of the camera right here, and then we're going to hopefully come up with something like this. So let me reset everything and let's get started. So if you look right here, you can see this is a raw file. Let's start out with a light here. It's a good place to start. Maybe I'll just pull my exposure back a little bit. Uh, maybe pull the highlights back just slightly. Open up the shadows a bit so we can see a little bit more detail under here. I shot this at ISO 50 to get this uh, smooth water result here. So maybe just open the shadows up a little bit. And then that flattens the image out a bit. So let's add a little bit of smart contrast, you know, just to bring back just a little bit of, shar uh, not sharpness, but just back a little bit of contrast. And I think that's a good starting point. Now let's move on down to AI Enhance. And let's just uh, take the AI accent and just move the slider a little bit to the right. We'll just bring in a little bit more detail and things in here. With artificial intelligence, I love this. And I might come back to light and work with my smart contrast just a little bit more. Something like that. Because I want a nice little bit of a contrast look to my image here. Uh, I left the temperature right where it was shot. And I think it looks good. If we need to readjust it, we'll come back to it later. But we can always come back to it. Okay, next I want to add a little bit of AI structure just to pop some details out in here. And AI structure is really a great tool. So let me just bump this up. Now, if I pull this way to the right, it'll get really crazy and kind of ugly. But a little bit goes a long way here. So maybe, maybe right around 20, I think that looks good. Now, we can click the eyeball right here. So here's our before and here's our after. So we're coming a long way, and I think it's looking good so far. The next thing I want to do is punch in some detail on these rocks here and on these background rocks. So to do that, I'm going to go to Detail Enhancer, or Details Enhancer. Take the small details up, you know, right around, oh, right around 25. And the medium up, not quite as much, around 17, and a little bit on the large details. Now I'm going to uh, paint this on using a layer mask. So let's click on Edit Mask and, and select a brush. And I'm going to take my opacity. I'm going to just take it up to 100% here. Make my brush a little bit smaller and work on these foreground rocks first. So I'm just going to paint. I'm painting in. So I'm just going to paint some of that detail up on these rocks here. Just so they just stand out a little bit. Because they are rocks and they have a lot of texture to them. And I want to bring out that texture. I don't think I'm going to bring any texture out in this sand here. But mainly on the rocks. Make my brush bigger. I'm just using the uh, right bracket key to do that. And I'm just going to paint on this, these areas of the rocks up in here. Back into here a little bit. I'm going to stay off of here. Because this is the main focus of the image to me. Maybe get a little bit on that tree right there. Maybe here. Just a little bit like so. And I think that's going to be pretty good. Now if we click on the eyeball right here, we can see where we painted our mask. All right, and let me click on this toggle so you can see the before and the after. So that just adds a little bit of extra detail on those rocks, and I think that looks nice. Notice that I'm just working down this list of tools here. I'm, I'm not messing with denoise because I shot this at ISO 50, but I'm coming right here to Landscape Enhancer, and I'm going to add a little bit of dehaze here just to remove a little bit of the haze in the image. There's not much. And it gives it a little extra contrast bump there. I'm not going to mess with Golden Hour. I'm going to take the Foliage Enhancer so I can uh, tweak up these little pine trees up in the front and some of the moss over in here. So let's just take the Foliage Enhancer and start to move it to the right. Now, don't go too crazy because it'll go nuclear on you. So just give it a little bit. You know, err on the side of a little less than too much. So maybe, maybe right around there. And I might take the Foliage Hue and just shift that a little bit. You know, so I don't make it too nuclear green, but somewhere where it looks nice and realistic, and I think that looks good. Now, click on the toggle. There's the before and there's the after. And that looks really good. I'm going to go ahead back up into light and just kind of look at my temperature again now that I'm 
editing this image and I just want to play with the temperature a little bit. Let me play with the tint here. I think I want to bump this tint a little bit to the magenta side of things. Maybe something like around there looks pretty good. And I'm pretty happy with the temperature. But the tint, I just felt it looked a little green to me. So I think that looks better right there. We're moving right along. We're a little over five minutes into the edit. The next thing I want to do is darken the bottom of this image just to close it off and darken the top of the image and maybe work on the sides as well. I could use a vignette, but I decided I want to use a uh, graduated filter to do that. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to come up to the layers and add a new layer, add a new adjustment layer, and then come down to the essentials. And I want to make sure I'm on light. I'm going to take the exposure and move it to the left just to darken the entire image here. Then come down to edit mask, get a gradient mask, and it says click and drag to draw a gradient. So I'm just going to click and drag up. And you can see what that's doing, right? It's darkening the bottom of the image. So it's real, it takes the full darkness here and then it graduates up to the center point and then fades off out into here. Now you can take this gradient and grab right here and make that gradient wider if you want to or more narrower. And I think I want to have it maybe somewhere right around in here. And then I can come to this dot right here and then just pull this up and down to the place I want it to be. And I think, I'm thinking maybe somewhere right around in there. Now we can come here with the exposure. If we feel we got it too dark, we can move the exposure to the right and lighten it back up a little bit. But I think somewhere right around in there looks really nice. All right, now the next thing we need to do is darken the top. So we have to come back to layers. Now this is very important. We have to add a new layer, add a new adjustment layer because we can't use multiple light tools on one layer. It's impossible because uh, it just won't work out. So what we need to do now is darken the exposure again. And we're going to come back to edit mask and get a gradient mask. And we're going to click and drag to draw the gradient again, but this time from the top down. So it'll get dark at the top and it'll graduate down Okay, so, and if, if you've overdone it here, you can come right here and see the little little uh, curve arrow there. You can straighten it up there. I'm just using my mouse to straighten it up. Maybe somewhere right around there. And again, you can adjust the, gra the graduation point here if you want to. And I might do something like that. Move this up a little bit. Because I only want it dark right up there at the top. Now let's readjust the exposure here so that it's darker. And that's way too dark. I don't want it to look unnatural. But, you know, I just want to keep you in the frame. So when, when you come through the frame and you come up to the top, this darkness will hold you into the frame here. All right, so that's, that's nice. So the next thing I want to do is come to layers again. And now I want to add another one, new adjustment layer. Again, I'm going to do the same thing, but now I'm going to work on the sides of the image here. And mainly just this side. I think this side's okay. So let's take our exposure and pull it back a little bit. And come back to Edit Mask, get another Gradient Mask. You'll be proficient at the Gradient Mask after you've seen this a few times. So we're going to click and drag this across here like so. And maybe somewhere right around there. Now we can take this and move this. See as I move it over, it gets, you know, it's darker on the left and it's lighter on the right. So I can move it. You know, I don't want to darken up my waterfall. I want it to graduate into the waterfall. But maybe somewhere right around in there looks pretty good. Now we can come to the exposure and play with that. We can darken it some more if we wanted to or just get it right where we want it. And I'm thinking right around there because what I want to do is I want to balance the light here with the light here so it doesn't look out of balance. And I think that's not too bad. Maybe I'll just lighten it up. No, it needs to become a little bit darker. Right there, now that's in balance. Now would be a great time to come back to layers and rename our layers so that we don't get confused later. So let's come to this first layer here, adjustment layer one. And see these three little dots here? Click that and go to rename layer. And let's say, uh, let's just say darken bottom. Good habit to bottom. 
If I could spell, I'd be in good shape. Bottom, not bottom. Okay, bottom. Forgive me for that. And now let's go to the next layer here. And let's rename that. And that was darken top. Okay. So we can darken the top. Now let's rename this top layer. And this is going to be called darken the side. This way we'll be able to go back in case we'd ever have to go back and revisit this. Darken, let's say left side. This foreground rock right here is screaming at me like, look at me, look at me, Dave. And I'm saying, no, I don't want to look at you. I'm going to look at the waterfall. So I want to darken this down. So let's use another method for this. Um, let's go to a new adjustment layer and click the plus new adjustment layer. And let's click on pro. And this time, let's do Dodge and Burn. Okay, and we'll click on Start Painting. I want to be in the Darken mode here. And my strength's at 50. Let's cut that back to about, you know, around 15, 16, somewhere around in there. Make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm just using the left bracket key. And I'm just going to paint over this rock. Right here. Yeah, just just to darken him down. Now, if I paint over him again, I'll add another um, fifteen percent. But let's just let's just take the strength now and just take it back to about five, and let's just hit the top of this rock one more time right here, just to bring it in balance. Because again, I want us to come back into the waterfall. Here's a very important step in your processing. Really, after you get so far, really study your image and see if there's anything staring at you in the face saying fix me fix me and to me these rocks here and these rocks here just seem a little bit light compared to the overall image here but it's nice because it's adding a nice like dramatic look to the image but i'm thinking i just want to slightly darken these down so i'm going to use the dodge and burn tool to do that so i'm going to click on start painting and i want to be undarkened and i'm still in darken mode let's make my brush bigger and let me, and I have a nice feathered edge on here. So let's, um, my strength is at 5%. So let's just, let's just paint over here a little bit, staying away from the waterfall. Let's come over here. I'm going to stay off the trees over there and off the waterfall. That's looking pretty good. Maybe let's hit it one more time. Right in there, hit it another time in there. And I think that looks more balanced. Now, what I might want to do now is come to the essentials here. And let's just add a little bit overall exposure bump to the image here. Let's just see what we get here if we just... Well, that's way too much. Just a little bit. Let's just uh, open up the exposure just a little bit there. And right there, I think we're done. Well, we use some... Uh, Pretty advanced techniques there with the uh, graduated uh, filters and things like that. Uh, but I think we got really good results, and I hope you learned a lot from this one. I'd really appreciate your feedback, so please leave comments and questions in the comments section below, and let's carry on a dialogue. I just want to really know what you guys think about Luminar 4, if these techniques have helped you. Um, hopefully, it's not too difficult to do. But I think if you do these kind of things to your images, it takes a little bit of time, but I think you're going to get great results. And it's really going to help your images and it's going to improve your art. Let's come up and click this eyeball right here and see our before. There's our before. And there's our app. Now that's camera raw right out of the camera. And here's after, after Luminar 4. I'm really happy with these results. I mean, I like using Photoshop and then launching out into plugins like Topaz and Luminar. But I'll tell you, if if you said, hey, we're going to place you on a deserted island and you can have one piece of software, what would it be? I would probably take Luminar 4 because I can get great results with it and I'd be very happy. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please like and share it with your friends. And also, if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. It really helps me out. And click the bell notification icon. This way, every time I put out a new training tutorial, you'll be notified. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And I really thank you for viewing and watching my tutorials. 
Uh, again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Well, thanks again for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy editing.